Mr. Speaker, when we ended yesterday, the member for Sozel asked us a few questions. But before I respond, Mr. Speaker, does that, does that uh, response account for my time or because the, the, the member for, for Sozel did not take the opportunity during the Standing Finance Committee? So in response to him, am I losing my time, Mr. Speaker? So I, I, will, I, will, I will take the... I take the easier one and leave the easiest for the Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the member for Miku for, for Sozel started off by saying that there is space for speculation. I'm not quite sure what he meant by space for speculation because everything, Mr. Speaker, is contained in the book. But what worries me, Mr. Speaker, is it because it was produced by the staff of the Ministry of Finance and not an accounting firm that he believes that there is space for speculation. No but, we, no but we will get to that, Mr. Speaker, during the policy debate. Mr. Speaker, he also spoke of inconsistencies. The only inconsistency I find, Mr. Speaker, is the way that the member for Sozel... Just hold on. Members, we had a very good day today, and I will not tolerate any deviation from what happened yesterday. Please allow members to contribute meaningfully to the debate without interruption. I will use every standing order to ensure that is done. Please proceed, member, and that interruption shall not count. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Inconsistencies, Mr. Speaker. The only inconsistency, Mr. Speaker, as I was saying earlier, is the way that the member for social comes in and out of what he chooses to remember and not remember. He also mentioned that about the performance before COVID, you know, essentially referring to 2019. And Mr. Speaker, I suppose during the policy debate, we will actually be able to demonstrate that the economy was quite bigger now than it is in 2019. But that's a policy debate question, so we will get to that. He also mentioned the point, Mr. Speaker, about borrowing. But Mr. Speaker, and we've had this conversation before in the House, Mr. Speaker. With regards to borrowing, Mr. Speaker, the member for Miku South, the member for Miku South, the then Minister of Finance, Prime Minister, with his economic experiment, Mr. Speaker, compromised the financial management of this country between 2017-18 and 2019-20, prior to COVID-19. And Mr. Speaker, we'll be able to demonstrate that also, that when he came into government in 2016 and what happened prior to COVID, we realized that this is his incompetence that got us to the steep decline we had in 2020. But the policy debate, Mr. Speaker, will further inform that. Mr. Speaker, when the member for Castries East became the prime minister of this country, and he had a bit of a discussion with the Ministry of Finance, what was said during the campaign and what we actually found when we got into government was quite the opposite. As of December 2021, the debt to GDP ratio in Russia, when it includes state-owned enterprises, was 101%. Mr. Speaker, countries in the region borrowed for COVID, not only St. Lucia, but in the case of St. Lucia, we borrowed 30% more than the 2019 levels, 31, sorry, 31 percentage points of 50% higher from the 2019 levels. On a comparative basis, Mr. Speaker, this was vastly sharper than any other country in the region or indeed the world. Mr. Speaker, an example. On average, countries increased their debt by nine percentage points or 16% from 2019 levels. In the case of the region excluding solution, Mr. Speaker, we increased, it was increased by 15 percentage points or 21% of 2019 levels. In the case of Senator, Mr. Speaker, remember it was 50% higher. So why was the borrowing so absolutely necessary in St. Lucia than in other parts of the region and indeed the world? And Mr. Speaker, one thing points to that. It is the incompetence of the member for Miku South, the former Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Just one other question, Bradley, before I move on. I don't want to spend too much time answering you. Um, he also made the point about the 
the reduction in the public assistance, which is a very significant thing for us. Bradley, member of Surrey for Sozial. It will be impossible for a St. Lucia Labour Party government to preside over a reduction in the public assistance program. What you would have noted in the book is the end of various specific projects, not the actual quantum going towards assisting the vulnerable in this country. That's a very significant point. Reduction in agriculture, Mr. Speaker, that also was a bit of a, of a misnomer because we've seen that we're going to spend an additional 400,000 for crop expansion. That's just an example. A million for insurance for farmers. Mr. Speaker, you also spoke about the why do we have to do the grant to the NLA? And I'm not too sure if I'm at liberty to say all of the reasons why, but I know there's one specific reason why, which is documented in writing. The member for Miku South, a few days before the general election, gave a commitment, actually more than a commitment, he gave an instruction that a particular company would not be liable to pay VAT and a few other taxes in St. Lucia. I'm not sure if the Prime Minister will be able to make it available, but that is in black and white, Bradley, member for Sozia, in black and white. I'm not sure if you're aware, Bradley, member for, for Sozia, but the member for Miku South signed such a letter. And it is because of that letter, monies were withheld from the NLA, which is why now we have to come in to step in to give you the subsidy. He will say no, Bradley, but I'm sure if you insist, the letter, the letter will be... <coughs> Member for Ancillary, now that you have reminded me, Sorry. the member for Grosley at the sitting last Tuesday promised to make this document that you just referred to a document to the House, and we have not received it. So, Member for Castro Central, when the member for Grosley returns, please remind him. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, Mr. Speaker, another very interesting comment. Um, the member for Sozel was not aware of how purchases of supplies under the supply warehouse are done. But as he is well aware, because he was the, missing, the recent Minister for Commerce, he is aware that it is managed under a sundry account in the Treasury Department. Bradley, remember for Suzel? So you would have been aware because you were recently the Minister of Commerce that that specific question you raised would have been something that you were quite aware of because you would have been the Minister of Commerce. So I wasn't quite sure. Because you raised the point about where some monies were coming from to purchase supplies for the warehouse. You didn't, wasn't you? Okay. Mr. Speaker, I will get now to my more important matters. Mr. Speaker, we really must stop undermining ourselves. This kind of behavior, Mr. Speaker, is what undermines this country locally, regionally, and internationally. The politics of the United Workers' Party, Mr. Speaker, is damaging this country. The Prime Minister, the Minister of Finance, member for cash Resist, stands in this house during a, a contribution. And the member for Miku South, leader of the opposition, a former Prime Minister, sits there with a certain green, as if there is something ominous that we are hiding. Mr. Speaker, this is reckless, unbecoming of the position he held and the position he currently occupies. The desire for power at all costs, Mr. Speaker, is very short-sighted. Mr. Speaker, I would like to urge the Member of Parliament for Miku South. It is okay, Mr. Speaker, to disagree with the policies of the government, an actual policy, and not what he conjures up in his mind. But to doubt the validity of the information contained in these estimates, Mr. Speaker, because they were prepared by the officials of the Ministry of Finance and not a, a private accounting firm is dangerous. For the love of country, Member for Miku South, please reconsider that tactic. And as we all know, Mr. Speaker, for evil to flourish, it only requires good men to do nothing. We will not allow you, Member for Miku South, to destroy the psyche of this country. 
we, Mr. Speaker, believe in the people of this country. And that's why the Ministry of Finance was the one preparing our estimates for us. We have the example of whether it was Heppel or Maria, Cayman City or Stephen King. And very interestingly, Mr. Speaker, when COVID hit, the very same people he thought were not capable of doing it were the ones he had to rely on to sort the problem out during the COVID pandemic. Mr. Speaker, it is a patent disregard for the people of this country. Mr. Speaker, and I'll go more into this during the policy debate, Mr. Speaker, but there is a little conversation that I heard the member from Miku South was making the point about his ex experiment with the VAT and the reduction of VAT. I challenge you, Mr. Speaker, to demonstrate or to show us where, in his estimates, he was able to either receive more revenue as a result of his action or grow the economy. None of that, Mr. Speaker, happened. Who, Mr. Speaker, are the true beneficiaries of that reduction in 2.5%? I know for a fact, for somebody in answer to save $25, they would need to spend $1,000. I am not to show any one of them, in particular the places that they're referring to as the most vulnerable, are spending $1,000 a month in groceries only to get a $25 reduction. $25, you need to spend $1,000. I'm not sure the maths was mapped in this speaker. The member for Microsoft needs to remember that he was the Prime Minister of St. Lucia and not some other country in this world. Mr. Speaker, prior to 1992, we were in a protected regime, a protected environment, so the growth rates were quite robust. We are now facing headwinds that we, we now have to face headwinds outside of preferential treatment. However, Mr. Speaker, this is the first time in the history of Senegal since 1992 that this country has been able to grow for three consecutive years above 3%. The first time, Mr. Speaker, since 1992, a feat the member for Miku South could only take notes now and try to emulate if he ever regains power in this country. I'm happy to see him making notes, Mr. Speaker, because I was going to ask you Which country? to get him, to get him, well, we don't decide that, the people decide that. But in the event, at least he's taking notes and hopefully he doesn't make the same mistakes he made in the past. Mr. Speaker, I stand here today to express my support for the 2024-2025 estimates of revenue and expenditure. Mr. Speaker, a national budget typically outlines the government's projected revenues and expenditures for the upcoming fiscal year. It serves as a, fiscal, as a financial plan that will guide the allocation of resources towards various sectors and programs. The Minister of Finance has indicated how resources will be distributed in the new financial year to provide for a host of public goods and services that are demanded by our citizens. Mr. Speaker, while this year has been baptized the year of infrastructure, I want us to spend some time to focus not only on the hard infrastructure, the bricks and mortar, roads, seaports, airports, buildings, but also on the soft infrastructure. However, Mr. Speaker, road rehabilitation is not only about motorability. It also, it's also about securing livelihoods and helping to alleviate, to elevate, sorry, the living standards of a community. Roads, Mr. Speaker, are the arteries through which the economy pulses. Roads link farmers to the markets workers to their jobs, students to their schools, and the sick to hospitals. Mr. Speaker, I speak of the institutions that deliver the various public goods and services. The overall budget is projected, Mr. Speaker, at 1.894 billion, comprising recurrent revenue, recurrent expenditure of 1.5 billion, and capital expenditure of 298 million. Total recurrent revenue is projected at 1.475 billion, tax revenue 1.328 billion and non-tax revenue of 146.8 million. Mr. Speaker, grants are projected at 108 million. The land share of the total budget is appropriated to the Department of Finance. Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Education follows with a 26.1 million budget. Sorry, the Ministry of Education follows with 26.1 million. The Ministry of Health with 191 million, the Department of Economic Development with 140 million, and the Department of Infrastructure 
with 122 million. Mr. Speaker, if we turn to the budget summary on page 9 of the draft estimates, we can see that almost every expenditure line has increased. Yes, Mr. Speaker, we are happy to see that principal repayments on our debt is reduced to 92.9 million. But Mr. Speaker, what this means for us is that we must maintain fiscal sustainability to avoid any debt distress, at the same time manage the economy with acceptable levels of risk and credit rating. But Mr. Speaker, the high level of interest payments due to the commercial borrowing rates of the former administration is diverting resources from other essential services and investments in the economic development. Mr. Speaker, the cost of borrowing money to provide essential services to our citizens and to undertake major infrastructure work is high. Although, Mr. Speaker, the Federal Reserve is pointing to lower interest rates as the year progresses, but as of now, Mr. Speaker, the, the costs are high. Mr. Speaker, we know that we have competent officers negotiating with the MDBs and other investors to ensure that we always receive favorable rates. However, on loans and other instruments, when the planned investment in capital, in, in capital infrastructure does not materialize, as planned, the country loses out, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there are many reasons why projects are delayed, but typically, there is a general assumption in St. Lucia that once it is a government project, it will be delayed, Mr. Speaker. This cannot be the way we grow this country. Mr. Speaker, total, capi total capital expenditure is on par with, various, with previous financial years. However, we can see an increase in the total net financing requirements for the financial year to $307.8 million. Mr. Speaker, the cost of doing business, the cost of running the country has increased and it is for this reason, Mr. Speaker. I wanted to focus on the soft infrastructure, the institutions, the systems, processes, procedures, and most importantly, the people who are responsible for public service delivery. Mr. Speaker, efficient service delivery in public sector institutions, systems, processes, and procedures is crucial for the effective functioning of government. For the well-being of our citizens, Mr. Speaker, we are investing heavily in expanding the economy, strengthening our governance and accountability systems, but we need to do more, Mr. Speaker, to ensure the timely and efficient delivery of projects. Mr. Speaker, the Department of Economic Development and the Department of Infrastructure take up a significant portion of our capital budget, a total of 157.1 million. The majority of this, Mr. Speaker, is allocated to building and infrastructure. Mr. Speaker, and the member for Cashes North would have discussed this venture this yesterday, the Millennium Highway West Coast Road project, the reconstruction of the Cashes of the Curly Sack Bridge are ongoing projects. We would like to witness, Mr. Speaker, an increase in the progress in the next financial year. Mr. Speaker, I am certain that the motorists who traverse the Northern Corridor are pleased with the plans of the Sir Julian Aaron Highway and the secondary roads improvement. And Mr. Speaker, yesterday we saw quite a few visuals of some of that work already being undertaken by the Member of Parliament for Grosley. Mr. Speaker, the secondary roads are to be maintained. These roads provide strategic relief from the congestion on the main thoroughfare. They enhance accessibility and support economic development. Mr. Speaker, the investment in road infrastructure, upgrades and the promotion of alternative routes the back roads will certainly require robust transportation planning to ensure safety and minimal environmental impacts. Mr. Speaker, our picturesque St. Lucia needs to be explored by locals and visitors as well. And therefore, we must remain committed to providing a resilient and sustainable transportation network. Mr. Speaker, the total amount appropriated for the financial year to the Department of Infrastructure, Ports and Transport is 122.3 million. Mr. Speaker, the allocation for road infrastructure construction, rehabilitation of, breeds, of bridges and culverts, slope stabilization, and the silting of rivers and drains, though significant, is still less than what is required. But we need, Mr. Speaker, to stretch the pie. Mr. Speaker, the shock bridge reconstruction has also been presented to this honorable house previously. Mr. Speaker, designs were completed, financing was negotiated, and the staff was hired to undertake this project as part of the expansion of the dual carriageway to Grosley. 
Mr. Speaker, I will allow the Minister responsible for infrastructure to explain more of this during the policy debate. Mr. Speaker, we have an allocation for maintenance of government buildings and separately we have an allocation for repairs and rehabilitation of various buildings. The finance administrative complex, the materials laboratory, the cash fishing fisheries complex and the repairs to fishing facilities. But Mr. Speaker, while they appear as small individually, together it is a sizable budget for a small country. Mr. Speaker, the quantum we expend in repairs and rehabilitation, Mr. Speaker, truly needs to be examined. As a responsible government, we must ensure, Mr. Speaker, that the health and safety of our staff who occupy those buildings. We must ensure the integrity of the buildings. As such, we need to get the root cause or causes for the increasing demands for repairs and rehabilitation of government buildings. Mr. Speaker, too frequently, the public are deprived of services because offices need to be closed for deep cleaning. A trip from ancillary to come to an office only to find out it's closed, Mr. Speaker, is indeed a terrible waste of hard-earned resources for the people of answer. Mr. Speaker, the St. Jude Hospital Reconstruction Project, since the fire in 2009, the timeline for completion of the St. Jude Hospital has been fraught with many challenges. Availability of funding, construction delays, regulatory approvals, have all been cited as reasons for delay, wastage, Mr. Speaker, and a certain predilection to certain behaviors, Mr. Speaker, none of which, Mr. Speaker, exists on this side of the House. Mr. Speaker, St. Jude Hospital represents not only a critical investment in healthcare infrastructure, but also signals resilience building. The St. Jude Hospital, Mr. Speaker, will enhance our capacity to respond to health emergencies and meet the healthcare needs of the Southern population. Mr. Speaker, we have the construction of the Hall of Justice, the construction of the police headquarters. These are significant investments aimed at modernizing our judicial system by providing access to justice. Mr. Speaker, the construction of the Hall of Justice is indeed intended to provide a centralized purpose-built facility to house the various sections of the judicial system, including the courts, administrative offices, legal services and other support services to ensure the efficient running of the judicial process. Mr. Speaker, the estimates of revenue and expenditure is a critical instrument, not only for managing public finance, it also ensures accountability and transparency in government operations. Mr. Speaker, the overall allocation for social service delivery to support programs that support the more vulnerable in our population such as, the social, such as the safety net for vulnerable populations affected by COVID-19 was funded by, the, funded by the Caribbean Development Bank are critical. Mr. Speaker, initiatives that are designed to protect and support vulnerable individuals in St. Lucia will always be taken seriously. Mr. Speaker, social inclusion is fundamental for the poverty reduction and alleviation of our ability to strengthen, expand, and graduate the social safety net cannot depend solely on the support of donors. Mr. Speaker, we need to build a robust system that includes contributions from corporate solutions. Mr. Speaker, I will say a little more of this at the policy debate. We have a number of initiatives, Mr. Speaker, earmarked for financing by the World Bank and the CDB policy-based loan, which the members of opposite seem to be demonizing. Despite, Mr. Speaker, they were the ones who initially signed that initial load. Mr. Speaker, the benefits of these concessionary financing instruments will only be realized if these initiatives are implemented efficiently. Mr. Speaker, that means we are not expecting to hear construction delays, DC has not approved, the new objection has not been granted, the consultants have not submitted their designs. Mr. Speaker, we want to see results because we have come to this honorable house to seek approvals to borrow money. Mr. Speaker, we justify this expenditure by stating it would facilitate the delivery of public services across different sectors, such as education, healthcare, infrastructure, citizen security, social welfare, and the public administration. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, we need to ensure that the framework for accountability is functional and that citizens of St. Lucia are truly benefiting, unlike some of the experiments of the last administration. 
Mr. Speaker, we also have a sizable sum appropriated from the Republic of China and Taiwan of 43.4 million. Mr. Speaker, these are initiatives in tourism, education, agriculture, as well as community infrastructure, the Library Market Square, the cemetery expansion, and others that are financed by grants. Mr. Speaker, these investments seek to empower our citizens, improve our livelihoods, and encourage community participation. Mr. Speaker, the beauty of St. Lucia comes from its people, the flora and fauna, our culture, and our very way of life. The environmental protection is fundamental to our sustainable development of St. Lucia. Our rich biodiversity, Mr. Speaker, and fragile ecosystems are at risk due to climate change. Mr. Speaker, we are indeed highly susceptible to the adverse effects of climate change, but we must seize the opportunity that it presents. Mr. Speaker, it is important to promote sustainable tourism and nature-based practices to minimize negative impacts on the environment. Mr. Speaker, the UBEC project is one such initiative. It adopts the holistic and integrated approach to the blue economy. Mr. Speaker, to harness the economic potential of the marine and coastal resources, we have requested funding from the World Bank. This project, Mr. Speaker, is coordinated by the Department of Finance and is a multifaceted and cuts across various sectors. 11.1 million is allocated for such an undertaking, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I also want to acknowledge the work of the Minister and the Department of Sustainable Development. The efforts at the UNFCCC has created access for engagement with the Green Climate Fund and others who are providing technical assistance and readiness support to address our climate change risk. The Department's total budget, Mr. Speaker, is $25.8 million. However, Mr. Speaker, the reach is quite wide. Mr. Speaker, this is my third year going through this budgetary process, and I could boldly state today that we have carefully crafted a budget that considers the economic, the social, and the political factors that are needed to drive, foster, and achieve sustainable and inclusive growth and development in St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, I strongly believe that in the order for us to advance our national development objectives, we need strong institutions, robust systems, transparent procedures, resilient and dedicated people, and the drive and process of a Labour Party government. The performance, Mr. Speaker, can be explained without spin. Some management, some recovery, and sound stewardship of this country by the Member of Parliament for Castries, the Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I will now turn quickly to the most important part of my contribution, my constituency. Head 36, Mr. Speaker, and the Home Affairs. Mr. Speaker, some years ago, some funds were raised for an ambulance for the constituency of Answer Canaries. Money was raised, money was contributed, locally and internationally. But yet, Mr. Speaker, as of 2021, when the election was called, there was no ambulance in the community of Answer Canaries. But Mr. Speaker, this Prime Minister, this government, Mr. Speaker, has approved a substation for the West Coast. We still sort of determine where exactly, but on the West Coast between Ansari and Canaries. Funds, Mr. Speaker, are also earmarked, has already been earmarked for that piece of work, Mr. Speaker. Head 37 National Security, Mr. Speaker. Repairs of police stations, as you know, Mr. Speaker, there are two in my constituency, which sometimes is used to hold uh, people who have transgress the law because custody suites, Mr. Speaker, no longer exist. Sorry? Head 41, Mr. Speaker. Agriculture and fisheries, Mr. Speaker. Expansion of the fruit crop production. Tree crop, tree crop expansion. <laughs> Repairs to fishing facilities, Mr. Speaker. And building resilience and adaptation to climate change. All things to which, Mr. Speaker, the constituency of Ansari Canaries will benefit from. Mr. Speaker, Head 42, Ministry of Commerce, the MSC Loan Grant Facility. And yesterday, Mr. Speaker, you would have heard that Ansari Canaries is not at the bottom of the list of the applicants, neither of those who've been approved. So we are making some progress, Mr. Speaker, in how we view ourselves and how we respond to services of government. Digital enhancement, Mr. Speaker, we will also be making our play benefit from that. 
the Love Solution Campaign Minister. We would like to also say that we too would like to share in the Love Campaign. I know there's some training available. We will be very happy for some of our young people to get some of that training. Love Campaign, there's some training. Mr. Speaker, Young Entrepreneurs in Action, the solarization of the Fish Fisher Cooperative in answering, Mr. Speaker. And the point to that, Mr. Speaker, is the benefit of the reduction in the solarization, the cost of electricity. We intend, Mr. Speaker, to put that money in a fund for the benefit of the fishermen of Ancillary, Mr. Speaker. Head 43, Mr. Speaker, infrastructure and the Department, uh, Department of Infrastructure, bridges and culverts, reconstruction and rehabilitation of roads, rivers and water course maintainers, slope stabilization, walls, Retaining walls, road safety, and West Coast project, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, very shortly, a wall um, which came down at the Jack Bell Community Center, Mr. Speaker. Very shortly, Mr. Speaker, that will, will commence. Thanks to the Prime Minister and the Minister for Infrastructure. Department of Finance, Mr. Speaker, I mentioned Head 44, Unleashing the Blue Economy. We are a coastal constituency in large measure, Mr. Speaker, so we do intend to benefit from that allocation, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, tourism, head 46. Mr. Speaker, at the moment, there are 11 bed and breakfasts, registered bed and breakfasts in Ansari Canneries. 11. But the former member of Ansari Canneries, former Minister of Tourism, found it fit, Mr. Speaker, to take taxpayers' money and create what is known in the village as something else, but for, for those uh, who may be young and may be watching a bed and breakfast. But there's a different name for it in the village, Mr. Speaker, because it's not what the people of Ansari actually wanted. 11 already exist, Mr. Speaker. Why not help the 11, bring them up to a certain standard? Why choose to take money to compete with the very people that you intend to help? But Mr. Speaker, that seems to be a pattern because there was a community meeting in Jackmel and the suggestion was why not create some kind of economic activity to benefit the community. So it was suggested, Mr. Speaker, that bamboo rafting may be one of the possibilities that the community should undertake. Mr. Speaker, I am told a few days ago that the former member of Parliament for Ansari Canneries admitted that he is the proprietor and owner of bamboo rafting. But the question is, how can you be the member for Ansari Canneries, the Minister of Tourism, the community puts an idea to you and you end up being the proprietor and the owner, Mr. Speaker. But that's just the beginning, Mr. Speaker. We spent, we spent, we spent quite a bit of money on, on, on fish fry, Mr. Speaker. Quite a bit of money on fish fry, on equipment for the vendors of the fish fry. Mr. Speaker, we are unable to determine where that equipment is. We are told it is in Roseau, being used by the former member of parliament for Ansari Canneries. Mr. Speaker, there's a lot that the former member of Ansari Canneries has to answer to. And like Sean was saying yesterday, I may seem quiet, but do not you, you come do for Denry You do mean the member for Denry North? Me, me, me for Denry North. Like the member for Denry North, Mr. Speaker. I may seem to be quiet, but do come for me. I have, I have what I need to have to respond in the due time, Mr. Speaker. To take people to the group. Mr. Speaker, we know exactly what transpired in Ansari Canneries. It's only now, Mr. Speaker, people are fond of hugging people for free. But in the past, the hugs were not for free. Mr. Speaker, when I became a member of Parliament for Ansari Canneries, my first request from a female to a sister with some, something she was doing to her home, she said to me, when am I going to visit? I said, what are you talking about? She says to me, in the past, whenever a request was made to a particular member of parliament, there was also in exchange for what? Mr. Speaker, I do not accept whether it is backhand, fronthand, sidehand, from any of my constituents for anything that I deliver to them. I'm doing it, Mr. Speaker, because it is my obligation to the constituency that raised me and made me who I am. So you're not renting from your father? I am not, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Head 48 Housing, the National Housing <laughs> Assistance Program, Mr. Speaker. Member for Miku South. Speaker, it's kind of a point, a point of order. We're not supposed to be in this house. 
saying anything of ill repute against any other member of the House. And I would ask that the member from Ansari Candies, Mr. Speaker, withdraw those statements. The member is not here what, to what is the What is the statement that you wish to... I'd like him to withdraw the statement about suggesting that the member was soliciting favors. I want him to withdraw the statement of the suggestion that in any way that the member did anything improper as it pertained to his business in, in, the, in the rafting. The member is not here to defend himself, Mr. Speaker. The member for Ansley Canaries relayed a discussion Correct. that he had had Correct. with an individual. He made no aspersions. He said he was approached. Members, when I'm speaking, please keep quiet. He made no assertion about allegations that his investigations have revealed. He spoke about a conversation and what he was told. I don't know that that rises to a point of order. Mr. Speaker, the member, the member was laced with improper motives. In, in That's in your interpretation. Order. Okay, Mr. Speaker, but I'm, it is my interpretation, and I'm asking that that he should not be allowed to make those kinds of improper um, allegations against a member who is not even in this house to defend himself, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, Here. Member for Miku South. Member for Ancillary Canaries, please continue. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the truth, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the truth has a certain way of hurting you. Mr. Speaker, I was... Order, please, members, can we stop the cross talk and allow the member for Ancillary Canaries to continue? Mr. Speaker, there is something about the truth that hurts. Member for Ancillary Canaries, if you believe you cannot be heard, I cannot be heard. You take your seat and your time will not run until you are satisfied that you have the peace and tranquility to continue your contribution. Mr. Speaker, I was only relaying a conversation I had with a constituent. That's all I was doing. Mr. Speaker, I could go on, you know, Mr. Speaker. I could say $1.2 million was given to a particular individual to conduct activities in the constituent of ancillary canneries that does not reside in ancillary canneries. And up to today, Mr. Speaker, I cannot point to you where that $1.2 million was spent. Do not come for me, Mr. Speaker. I am busy doing the work of the government of St. Lucia. But don't think I am weak. And you, the member of parliament for Miku South, you and I, you and I, you and I, you, you, you and I, you and I share a particular history. Mr. Speaker, the member of Miku South and I share a particular history. Before I became a candidate for the St. Lucia Labour Party, the member from Miku South, in addition to saying I had no pedigree in the first instance, subsequent to that, he approached me to run as a candidate for the United Workers Party for Ansari Candidates. You did, and it is on record, you did, because I was in a boardroom. Ah, it's okay, okay. But Mr. Speaker, we, the member from Miku South and I, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the member for Miku South, the member for Miku South, the member, Mr. Speaker, the member for Miku South is, Mr. Speaker, the member for Miku South needs to also remember that we have friends in similar places. Oh yeah, you're right. We don't have friends in similar places. They don't, as, they don't associate with certain kinds of behaviors, Mr. Speaker. So when we get, when we attend meetings and we see people handing out business cards as ambassadors of St. Lucia, that we don't know or recognize, Mr. Speaker, that we don't know or recognize, Mr. Speaker, that we don't know or recognize, Mr. Speaker, we know why we don't share the same company. You and I know you and I know exactly what I'm Remember, could you return to the Mr. Estimates? Speaker, the, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Head 48 Housing, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, like the other constituencies, Mr. Speaker, I have received, I have received a fair contribution, Mr. Speaker, from the member for Cash North and indeed assistance. North? 
member for Cashew Central. The member for Cashew is now has assisted me also, Mr. Speaker, but not with housing, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Town and Village Council, Mr. Speaker. The rehabilitation of human resource centers, Mr. Speaker. I intend also, Mr. Speaker, to benefit from that. Mr. Speaker, if you were to visit the constituency of Anse Canaries before 2021, none of the HRDC centers were functional. Mr. Speaker, there were leaky pipes, busted doors, non-functioning ACs. But if you go there now, Mr. Speaker, there are computers there to assist the young people of Anse Canaries to apply for various benefits of the government of St. Lucia. Head 57, Mr. Speaker, equity. The community after school program, the house care program, the human capital resilience program, the BNTF 10 program, the shock response and the safety net program, Mr. Speaker, I intend for my constituency to benefit from all of those, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, head, head 52 education. Likewise, Mr. Speaker, we intend, Mr. Speaker, that the constituency of Anzari Canaries to also benefit from the rehab of schools, the equip program, the construction of the additional block at care, Mr. Speaker, may not be in my constituency, but my constituents will have an opportunity to get access to further education. The TVET transformation project, Mr. Speaker. The OECS skills and innovation project. Head 53, Mr. Speaker, health. Mr. Speaker, a lot of talk have been um, um, going around as if the government is separate from the people. Any money that the government of St. Lucia raises, Mr. Speaker, is towards the direct benefit of the people of St. Lucia. It is not being spent or managed or advised in an account outside of St. Lucia. The Prime Minister, the Prime Minister and the Minister for Finance is, Mr. Speaker, the person in charge of the Consolidated Fund. We know where to find him, we know where he lives, and we know his office address. And we don't, we don't pay commission on loans. Eh? Mr. Speaker, no on head 54 spots, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I intend for my constituents to also benefit from the rehabilitation of sports facilities. Mr. Speaker, as you know, Mr. Speaker, the member for Grosley mentioned it yesterday. I've already started work on the repairs of my sporting facilities. Uh, the Ottawa Court, Mr. Speaker, just benefited from a, some assistance from the Ministry, from the NLA and the Minister of Sports. Mr. Speaker, we will do likewise in Vanna, Mr. Speaker, and Mr. Speaker, all subject to the availability of funds, Mr. Speaker, we intend, Mr. Speaker, to build a court in Bellevue there, Mr. Speaker. Head 56, Mr. Speaker. Economic development and the youth economy. Mr. Speaker, the CDB, Mr. Speaker, the CDP, Mr. Speaker, allows us the opportunity to assist many of our constituencies, whether it is for infrastructure projects, Mr. Speaker, or for social assistance. Mr. Speaker, there are more students today attending higher education in Anzari Canaries than there was over the last five years. More, Mr. Speaker, whether it is in Cuba, in Taiwan, at the South Louis Community College, doing the nursing program and various other programs. This member of parliament, Mr. Speaker, believes in education and does not ask which party you support. The moment you come to this member of parliament with an assistance request, the first question is, what is it for? Is it for you to go and gallivant, or is it for you to put into productive use? The moment I am satisfied that it's productive use, I don't care if you flavo or if you labor, the money of this country belongs to the people of this country, Mr. Speaker. We're not, Mr. Speaker, discriminating. The wickedness, Mr. Speaker, of the past is not going to happen in this government, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, just to be the very cap, so my, my, my members of uh, my, my cabinet colleagues could get jealous, Mr. Speaker. Since 2021, Mr. Speaker, the Wellness Center in Ansari, the Jetty in Ansari, the Mangrove Project, Mr. Speaker, is about to commence in Ansari. The court, Mr. Speaker, in Ottawa is the lights are on. I'd like to thank the OECS. The lights are on, Mr. Speaker. The lights have been installed. We are just waiting to tidy up the surrounding area, Mr. Speaker, to do an official opening, Mr. Speaker. The bridge, Mr. Speaker, in Ansari, Mr. Speaker. The mini theater in Ansari, Mr. Speaker, is being renovated as we speak. As we speak, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I won't mention the Vanna Venus Ansari bypass road because the member for Denry North has given it sufficient attention. He compares it every single time, Mr. Speaker, when he wants to make a request for roads. He would like it, he would like his barber green as black as mine, Mr. Speaker. We wasted no time, Mr. Speaker, bringing relief to the people of Ansari Canaries. The road was, was scheduled to be done. 
but for whatever reason it was taken out and redirected somewhere else mr speaker but in due course mr speaker we will ask the relevant questions mr speaker the retaining wall mr speaker at the jack mill community center the jonas road mr speaker which leads up to woodview estate mr speaker and if you are into bird watching mr speaker i encourage you mr speaker to spend some time in my constituency and enjoy the flower fauna and of course a bit of nature mr speaker the montezo bridge mr speaker the montezo bridge mr speaker is almost complete mr speaker the rehabilitation of my sporting facilities has committed mr speaker the canneries market mr speaker is almost complete and will be open very shortly mr speaker the west coast sub fire station mr speaker and obviously mr speaker the sewer treatment plant for answering mr speaker there was never any sewer treatment plant as part of the development for the bed and breakfast. I'm told when the, mem the former member of parliament went down to Ancillary with the journalists, they asked him, where is the sewer treatment plant? Because you said it exists. He said, Mr. Speaker, it's actually on a plan. So if it's on a plan, why was it not installed and the building is almost complete? The idea, Mr. Speaker, the agenda, Mr. Speaker, was never to deal with the sewer treatment in any particular way in Ancillary counties. Because he believed, Mr. Speaker, that what exists in the past is acceptable going forward. Mr. Speaker, I do not believe so, and that is why the member for Castries is the Prime Minister, the Minister of Finance, Mr. Minister, made available to me, well, not to me, to the constituency of Answer Canaries, $1.2 million, Mr. Speaker, to install that sewer treatment plant. So when the bed and breakfast opens, when the market opens, Mr. Speaker, we'll be able to discharge the waste in a very efficient way, Mr. Speaker. At the moment, Mr. Speaker, it, is it was scheduled to go directly into the sea, there is a pipe, Mr. Speaker. If you go to answer, you could see where they laid the pipe, Mr. Speaker. That's what, that's what the intention was, Mr. Speaker. And there's this, there's this fascination that whenever people are in misery, to point to answer canneries as the go-to place to make their lives feel better. Mr. Speaker, in answer canneries, Mr. Speaker, we are, we are a decent, loving set of people. But do not, Mr. Speaker, believe it is acceptable for you to go all over the place and remind us of our temporary economic situation. I'm only in government for just over two years, Mr. Speaker. When Ansari Canyons was recorded as the poorest village in this country, Mr. Speaker, I was not in government. I am only now in government, and we are making the strides to connect the dots. So when you make fun of paying facility fees, when you make fun of the maths and English, it's because you don't recognize that we're trying to close a particular gap. The people of Ansari Canaries deserve just as good as your children deserve. And I will ensure that they have the opportunities that you afford your children. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I, Mr. Speaker, stand in 120% of this revenue of estimates and expenditure, Mr. Speaker. When we get to the policy debate, Mr. Speaker, a lot more will be said. But Mr. Speaker, let it be said today, Mr. Speaker, I may be busy doing the work of the government of St. Lucia, the people of St. Lucia, but I am by no means weak or without information. I am only concentrating on what I have been elected to do. But when the time comes, Mr. Speaker, all the misappropriated funds, whether it is the lights on the Jack Mel field, the $1.2 million that was paid to a particular individual, and a host of other matters, Mr. Speaker, someone will have to answer for you, Mr. Speaker. On this, Mr. Speaker, I submit my support to the appropriate for the estimates of revenue expenditure for 24-25. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.